What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys Linux Mint. So I was looking through my video collection on YouTube and I saw that I haven't covered Linux Mint at all. I did a video just showing people how to upgrade from Linux 19.1 to Linux Mint 20 something, whatever the current version is, but I never did a review or a quick look of Linux Mint. So I figured I would go through that process today. So let's go on and get to DistroWatch so we can check out Linux Mint right fast. Now, Linux Mint has been around for a while. It's basically a Debian based distribution. It actually came from Ubuntu. Uh, some people came and took the Ubuntu distribution and reworked it and came out with Linux Mint. So I'm at the DistroWatch page and let's go down and go through Linux Mint. I already have it pulled up. And just so you know, the popularity of Linux Mint has been rapidly going up as well as like MX Linux and another one that I saw that's up there at the top. Oh, Manjaro. Um, but Linux Mint is number three on the list. But let's go on and uh, just read a little bit about it. It says Linux Mint is a Ubuntu based distribution whose goal is to provide a classic desktop experience with more convenient custom tools and the optional out of the box multimedia support. It also adds a custom desktop and menus, several unique configuration tools and a web based package inst installation interface. Linux Mint is co compatible with Ubuntu software repository. And I actually made a mistake. Linux Mint has actually been number three for about 12 months now. So that's super dope. So it has been up there. Uh, a lot of people really like Linux Mint. So that was another reason I wanted to go on and cover it. And just, I forgot up here at the top it says os type linux based on debian ubuntu uh the origin is actually out of ireland and the architecture you know i686 and x8664 as well as the desktop and like i said they're kind of flagship desktop from when they uh first were released what came it came with cinnamon desktop and that was my first time ever hearing about the cinnamon desktop was from linux mint but it's a, a custom, you know, desktop with men menus and all that stuff. And it's been around for a while. Uh, they have a lot of people using it. So it's a lot of support that's tied to it. And it's a big following behind this actual desktop. So let's go on and install Linux Mint right fast. And I'm gonna do it through VirtualBox. So let me go on and get that up so you guys can see how to install Linux Mint. So let's get started. And before I do that, let me go to Linux Mint's website and just to show you guys a little bit about it. I'm not going to read anything on it, but I'm going to link this down in the description below. But this is where you actually get Linux Mint. And right now, the most recent version is Mint 20.1 Ulisa. That's the code name for it. And then if we scroll down, you know, you can get the Cinnamon desktop, the Mate desktop or the XFCE version uh, of the desktop environment on top of Linux Mint. So, and if we go over here to documentation, this is basically the installation guide and you can follow it. They have, you know, a very detailed installation guide. So you can go through the installation. It also gives you the requirements for the actual install as far as hardware and all that good stuff so uh just check this out if you need to understand or if you need to get a little bit more information or if you run into any issues while the while you're doing the installation now let's go on and get started right fast uh and let me switch over to the virtual machine okay cool so i have uh the virtual machine built and I'm booting into Linux Mint so we can go down and get the installation going. 
so let's press enter right here instead of waiting for that countdown and wait for the system to boot up okay cool so we booted up into the system to the live iso now you can play around with it you can actually use the system however you want to from here but uh we're gonna go down and jump right into the install and just to show you guys it'll put a script on the desktop and all you have to do is double click on it and this will start the installation process so you see it pop up and we can go through it and this install is basically basically like installing Ubuntu. So it's a very simple process. I'm gonna just quickly breeze through it. Uh, that's just the English, you know, the uh, language. And then this is the keyboard layout. And then you can install multimedia codexes if you want to. Um, I'm gonna I'm just click the checkbox because uh, you guys don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna skip through the install. So if it takes me an hour to install, You'll only see like 20 seconds of it, but let's go down and hit continue. It's taking a little minutes and cool. So it found the hard drive. So it's asking you what you want to do. And this is basically erase the disk and install Linux Mint. And there are some advanced features if you want to click on them and use them like LVM as well as encryption. Uh, so I highly suggest you encrypt your drive that's what i typically do on every distribution that i use i use lvm with encryption just in case you lose if you lose your laptop or whatever then nobody can actually get into your stuff because it's all encrypted unless they know the key which is highly unlikely but let's hit cancel there and then we're not going to use any of those advanced features since I'm just doing this on virtual box, but let's hit install now. And then that's pretty much it. It'll go through the process of installing everything. I think it may pop up asking you about grub. Um, and ooh, I forgot. It'll start the install in the background, but it's a few other things that it'll ask you like uh, setting up the account, you know, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna just put Josh in there and I'm gonna put Mint 20 as the name of the system and then go on and type in a password right fast and you know we got to make it super strong right so uh, it says require my password on login that's what i always want to do that's what you should do as well uh just make sure you you know require a password on login otherwise if someone gets your laptop and you install this on physical hardware if somebody gets on get your laptop your system will automatically log into the system now yeah they can't make any changes as far as like using a pseudo account but they'll be in your system to get that get get files you you can even plug in a usb and copy a whole bunch of stuff off your system you know without any pseudo access needed to do that because you're logged into your account everything you own under your home directory is available to you so if somebody plugs in something get what they want off their system you know it's nothing stopping them from doing it but scroll down hit continue and we are done and it'll finish the installation it'll go through as you can see it was copying files in the background while we was going through doing that part of it uh that's why it didn't take much longer or too long to start in start uh copying all the files over but i'll skip this uh you guys will see it when it pops up and be finished so okay cool so the installation is complete and i just want to show you the box that'll pop up at the end but it installed grub you know what i'm saying and install linux mint on the virtual machine hard drive so let's go down and hit restart now and we'll go through the reboot process and we'll boot up into linux mint so i'll be back when it comes up okay cool so this is the login screen now let's go down and log into it by typing in my passwords and we should be greeted with the desktop soon and i'll go down and fix the desktop uh and i'll be right back okay cool so we booted up into the system uh the first thing that'll pop up is a welcome screen and we can read this right fast it says welcome to linux mint welcome to your new operating system this welcome screen will guide you through the first steps uh show you how to find help and where to get more information about linux mint on behalf of develop the de the development team and everyone on behalf of the development team and everyone involved in the project we'd like to thank you for choosing linux mint 
we hope you'll enjoy using it as much as you enjoy as much as we enjoy working on it have a great time and don't hesitate to send feedback so that's super cool you know what i'm saying and then we can go through the first couple steps uh right here uh this is like you could change up the colors so you know you guys know i like a dark theme so that's cool uh the panel layout you could change it up you could put the uh let's let's just go on and switch it up and make it a little a little bit different um let's see let's leave it on modern let's go back to modern and basically what that is is a large panel with grouped windows and system small system tray so super cool and then uh system snaps uh you can launch that uh it has a whole bunch of programs you can you know launch from the beginning like the driver manager update manager so it's good they have all this stuff right here uh just to show you how to actually get to everything uh and then documentation we can go to the documentation i'm pretty sure this will launch the documentation on the website so you just hit launch and it'll take you to it uh new features uh click the button to discover new features introduced in this version of linux mint so that's cool you can check out everything right there as well as the release notes which is you know dope to see but uh let's see web form you can click on that and go to the web form then they have an irc chat room if you want to check that out as well uh, and then they also have you know a way to contribute to the project because you know this is all done by volunteers and people that are spending their time to actually contrib contribute to this distribution and everything and i apologize i just went on clicked on one of those uh i think i clicked on the features or new features and it just brought up that that website with the new features on all the changes that are in this version of linux man let me go down and close that though and then also let's close this and then right here you can actually um select if you don't want the dialogue to show up on startup so that's something you may want to do without this anytime you boot up the system it won't show this welcome screen anymore if you click that button but anyway let's start on the right hand side and just work our way to the start menu over here on the left but uh as you can see this is the time you know it's got a calendar you know with the time and all that good stuff you can set that as you need it uh the battery settings so you can go in here and change the power settings volume settings right here network settings printer settings and it was cool that one thing about this system it automatically detected my brother's printer that's in the other room it's a wireless printer uh and as soon as you know he saw it on the network or whatever or it hopped on the network it discovered the printer that is that's out there now i'm not sure if it'll work right out the box you may have to install the drivers or something i don't know but it detected right away so that's super cool now here is the update manager you know they'll put that so you have your alerts pop up right here uh just telling you that there are some updates to the system and you can go through and update your system as needed now let's go down and close that right fast but this is your and this is i guess an alert yeah so those are some alerts that pop up so you'll see alerts pop up here as you you know open up stuff and this is like a system report or system check or whatever and one thing it's saying is install language packs um and then you can set up a system restore so time shift is installed on here by default so you can start taking snapshots so your system as you're updating things and changing things and all that good stuff so installing software you know you can install us you can get a snapshot of the system and then install whatever software you want or whatever and if you mess something up you can restore back to that previous version of linux mint before you install whatever applications using the snapshot now uh it's got some system information here uh so that pulls up everything there um crash reports so you could check that as well uh but let's go down and close that out and then on the desktop right fast so you have a way to get to your computer uh which kind of looks like windows when you pop it up you know it's got your drives or whatever and you can go through and you know open up your file system that way you can go to your documents you know all that good stuff uh or you can just click on home and that will take you to your home directory where it has all those folders there for you uh so you're good to go and then that was 
pretty cool. I like how it shows the, you know, at a quick glance, it shows you how much drive space has been taken up by the operating system uh, or how much you have left, depending on how you look at it. You know what I'm saying? So let's go down and close this though. And this is the file explorer, kind of like what we was just in. And then they also had a terminal there. So let's go to the about. I just want to see what it is. And it's GNOME terminal uh, 3.36. So good to go. And let's go down and close that. And there was one other thing I wanted to see what. Um, so this is using Nemo. OK, so Nemo, that's cool. And then right here, uh, default browser. Uh, which I see in a lot of distributions nowadays is actually Firefox. So Firefox is installed by default. This will, you know, show the desktop. So that's what that is basically show desktop. So if you click that, it'll drop everything down and show the desktop. So super cool. Now, uh, start menu. Uh, and we can kind of quickly go through this uh, Firefox. These are your, you know, kind of pinned application so you got your browser you got your software manager and let's go down and open up the software manager but let's show you the rest of it over here but this is your settings and we can actually go into that as well look at the settings but then terminal you know the browser uh this is the lock screen and then you can shut down the system from here or log out and then shut down right here shut down the computer but let's go through these system settings uh, right fast and actually let's start with the software manager but it's your typical software manager you can go through and install they had a recommended uh, applications to install and then now here is broken up in categories and then you can also search up here uh, and pretty cool so it, as you can see it's called mint installer uh, 8.085 but super cool that it's got all this you know right here for you and like i said you can search right here you can find whatever you want uh from there and let's go down and close it up and now here is the system settings so this is where you go through and change everything uh anything you want as far as the system goes you could change it up uh, as far as background you know effects uh font themes they have some other themes in there and that was one thing I always like to do is change the desktop background. Uh, that's one thing I like to kind of do so I can get me a screen, a good screenshot for the thumbnail uh, of this video. So it's one thing I like to do. And this green looks actually good with the black or the dark theme. So let me go down and roll with that one. And then uh, you can go through the prefaces right here, but it's a lot of prefaces in here. Uh, extensions you know your general settings hot corners so that's basically like if you hit the the corner of the desktop top the top it'll um, you know minimize things or it'll do certain things that you want I think it's disabled by default which is fine um, so I like that but then you got your hardware area Bluetooth you know color settings this you know you can go in and look at the disk settings display settings um, pretty much network you know anything dealing with hardware is under here uh, and it's that system information that I thought we looked at earlier but no that's fine uh, but this shows you know the version the operating system that we're actually on so Linux Mint 20 this is the cinnamon version 4.8.5 and then here's our kernel so it's on 4. Point, I mean 5.4 that zero 58 generic uh, and it also shows your processor memory you know the hard drive and all that other stuff uh, graphics cord so that's good to go but all the hardware information is right here and then here is the administration information so driver manager you can go in and manage the drivers uh, the firewall settings which uh, I'm pretty sure is off um it should be on though they should allow it or go down and activate it by default yeah for some reason uh most of the distributions i go on the actual firewall is not on but you can just go through and enable it you know what i'm saying and that'll you know enable the firewall for you but uh here we go login window 
uh, software sources, users and groups. You can add new users, but it's pretty much your administration tools. Now, that's pretty much it for this desktop. Um, like we can look at some of the applications that are here, but they're pretty much standard. Um, let me just look and see if they have some stuff that kind of stand out to me. But I mean, they have an archive manager, you know, calculator. You need that. Uh, I always want to see a, you know, a calculator. Uh, Redshift, that's a color temperature adjustment tool. That's cool. Uh, I haven't seen that one. Uh, then we have USB image writer. So that's there. You know, graphics, got pics, drawing, uh, internet, uh, hex chat. So that's there. And Thunderbird. So excited to see that in this actual Linux Mint version. I believe it's in, it was in uh previous version as well but it's just good to see it or whatever then transmission uh web apps uh then you got office so you got LibreOffice installed um rhythm box which i really like rhythm box um administrative tools so you got your backup software backup tool uh drivers manager and some of the stuff you can get to from the settings is in there and then preferences this is a lot of the stuff you can get to under the settings as well uh, i think that's under the hardware port well some of his hardware some of his uh software you know changes and then your places and recent files and stuff so super cool that it keeps a track of what you're actually doing on the system so you can refer back to it but as you can see you know you have your normal terminal uh, you can update the system from here, you know, but I'm not going to run any updates on it because I know that'll probably take a long time. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this gives you a, a good overview of Linux Mint. And just to let you see what it's all about in case you want to try it out for yourself. But please like, share and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave comments down in the comment boxes below. And of course, keep it techie.